The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, my name is James. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays, where we review equipment for your electronics workbench. I'm continuing the series on soldering tools with the help of Weller's WX family. In this video, I'm talking about surface mount rework. Previously, I gave viewers a homework assignment. I asked, what does it take to make a TI-85 run faster? Thanks to everyone who responded. As it turns out, we only need to change a single component. And for that, we'll end up using all of the gear that is right here. Before making any changes to the calculator, I want to run a simple program to show its speed. This loop will print numbers from 1 to 250. I'll use this slightly more powerful calculator to time it. And it takes about 7 seconds. FYI, I ran that test like 4 times to verify the result. So now let's go see what I'm going to change. Right under the screen is the Z80 processor and next to it is a surface mount resistor and a capacitor. These two components are part of the RC oscillator used to clock the Z80. By changing the capacitor, we can also change the clock speed. Using my scope, I can measure the current frequency, which looks like it's running about 5.6 MHz. Now I'm ready to change the capacitor, which is where the Weller gear comes in. Since this calculator is like 30 years old and getting more rare, I want to practice with these tools before I permanently damage the calculator, which is something that 12 year old me didn't really care about. Now, as it turns out, I do have a couple of other boards that need some rework. So we'll look at how these tools work for different soldering tasks before we tackle the TI-85. When working with surface mount parts, a hot air tool is very helpful. Here is Weller's WX HAP200. It connects to the WXR3's air port. The way this tool works is that when you press the button, air starts flowing through it. It does take a few seconds to heat up to temperature, but that's a good thing. It helps to prevent thermal shocking the components that you're trying to repair. Now for smaller ICs, you do not need any additional accessories. Well, other than flux. Let's combine these two things together and repair a custom Arduino board. This one has a QFN 328P that needs to be replaced. On the WXR3, I dropped the speed down to 25% and removed the nozzle from the HAP. Then I apply heat and after a few seconds, that little chip comes off with no problem. I tried the same technique on some larger ICs, like these found on my old Super Famicom logic board. Just blowing hot air onto the chips did not work so well. They were just too large. Which is when I started using the Weller WRK accessory set. Each piece creates a mini reflow oven around the IC, and there are several pieces to accommodate common chip sizes. This stick has a suction cup on one end and connects to the WXR3's pickup port on the other. The way this works is the entire assembly sits on top of the chip. The WXHAP pokes into the hole in the side. Then you press the button and wait. After some practice, I found that when the flux starts smoking heavily, the solder is back to a liquid state. Using the suction cup's vacuum, the chip easily lifts up. Okay, you're thinking, sure, that's great, but what does this have to do with your calculator? We don't need to remove any ICs, we're just changing a component. Okay, stick with me. Weller has a very cool tool for removing two terminal surface mount components. Check out these tweezers, they're called the WXMT. On the tips are teeny tiny soldering irons. And like most things in the WX family, the tweezers are interchangeable with different sizes for different size components. Let's go back to the Super Nintendo board to practice removing capacitors. Once up to temperature, it is just a matter of grabbing the components. The only annoying aspect is that they tend to stick to the tip, so I used a light tap to get them to fall off. What about putting the capacitor back? 
you might be thinking, I'll just use the tweezers to grab the new capacitor and then place it on the board. However, there's two problems with that approach. First is that on chips with a size of 0805 or larger, touching the terminals with an iron can thermally crack the capacitor. What's worse is that if they do crack, you may not even see it because it's internal to the construction. So if you do use a pencil iron, make sure you do not touch a capacitor's terminals with it. And then the second problem I've already mentioned, the surface mount parts stick to the tips. So instead, the preferred method is to use hot air. This board is for my vector network analyzer. It lets me measure the impedance of components like a capacitor. To be useful, I need to solder a capacitor and an SMA connector onto it. So let's go try doing that. To limit the amount of paste I'm using, I just dab a little bit onto each pad. Then I grab a capacitor and place it onto the paste. Now I just need to grab my hot air tool and, well, so much for that ceramic. Yeah, you have to be careful with uh, airflow on surface mount components. Just like the small IC from before, dropping the airflow down to like 15 to 25% allows the capacitor to be reflowed. Here's a cool magic trick. When the paste turns into liquid, surface tension pulls the cap into place, which means you do not have to be super careful with either the paste or placement of parts. Science will fix the board for you. Now you'll notice throughout this whole video when I hold the WXHAP, it's at a funny angle. The goal is to create a consistent heat zone around a part. However, there's a camera in my way. I really need the macroscope soldering tool that Clem built in a recent project video. So in the meantime, I'm trying to balance your ability to see what I'm doing and actually making the reflow stuff work. That board is pretty simple to solder and the capacitor is an 805, which is relatively large. Let's watch what happens when I try to solder some 0402s. This board is a switching power supply. It takes nine to 12 volts in and outputs five volts. Originally, I used my super advanced reflow oven to solder these boards. And unfortunately, the 0402 resistors that set the output voltage didn't make it. To repair these tiny resistors, I am using the Weller WXMP MS. This micro soldering iron has interchangeable tips of various shapes and sizes. Using the smallest tip available, I am easily able to work with 0402s. One trick I found was to use solder paste and the hot air tool to put my initial blob of solder down. After that, using the WXMP was just like using its larger cousins. A quick oscilloscope measurement shows the output voltage is at 5.2 volts. It's supposed to be five volts, but since there's no load, that sounds about right to me. At this point, I have practiced soldering and desoldering multiple surface mount components with a variety of welder soldering tools. My plan is to use the tweezers to remove the existing capacitor and hot air to reflow a new one into place. With some flux, the WXMT made this removal quick and easy. Before adding solder paste, I clean up the field with solder wick. The original capacitor was around 22 picofarads. My replacement is a C0G with 4.7 picofarads. The hot air tool reflowed the new capacitor in no time. And now is the moment of truth. Will the calculator turn on? Will it be faster? Will it explode? Subscribe and find out next week on Element 14 Presents. Just kidding. After hitting on, I need to increase the screen contrast. A blinking cursor and the reset message is a very good sign. I retyped my program from before so that we could run the same 250 number test. And check that out, it finished in less than three seconds. I admit this is a very simple hack, but it was just as fun to do it today as it was almost 30 years ago. Thank you for letting me show you the Weller WXR3 and related surface mount soldering tools for this minor upgrade. They are such a great fit for surface mount work. The outstanding piece is the HAP200, which is a solid hot air tool. Moving forward, in my next soldering video, I'm going to cover fume extraction. In fact, you might have noticed that I have this hood in some of my shots. This is my fume extractor. We'll talk about that next time. Before that, I'm curious about the community's understanding about lead-free solder and fumes. So I have a couple of poll questions for you over on Element 14. The first one is, which do you use, lead or lead-free solder? 
And the second is, are soldering fumes harmful, yes or no? With either of these questions, please leave a comment on the poll letting me know your thoughts on why. Make sure you check out the show notes at element14.com. They have links to the polls. They include additional information about things like the RC oscillator or information on the boards that I used in this video, as well as links to the products mentioned. Thank you again for watching. For now, it's time for me to get back to my workbench.